Have you ever wanted to add some handheld motion to your Houdini cameras? Well, stick around and I'll show you how. Also, check out my brand new intro. Hi, my name is Kaze and welcome to another Right Brain tutorial. In this tutorial, I thought I would show you how you can add some handheld motion to your Houdini cameras. And uh, if you're coming from Cinema 4D, then you know that their, uh, Cinema 4D gives you this really, really handy tool called the motion camera. And it has uh, all sorts of different presets that you can kind of choose, you know, how steady the camera is or how loose it is. And there's a way we can recreate that in Houdini and it's actually fairly easy and very straightforward and to a large degree much more powerful. So uh, let's check it out. Uh, what I have here in my scene is basically just this uh, missile uh, model that I got from the French Monkeys uh, missile kit, I think what it is. I can post the link in the description if you're interested. And uh, the scene that we're trying to create is, uh, let's say that this missile is kind of flying through the air, it's going really fast. <laughs> And uh, and maybe we're kind of like chasing it. We're on a jet, and uh, inside the jet, there's this kind of <laughs> camera operator, and he's trying to kind of like uh, film this missile kind of flying away. So uh, so there's a lot of turbulence, but there's also like this kind of handheld kind of vibe to the footage. Okay, so let's start by creating a camera. I'm just gonna like position here, maybe like kind of go a little bit further back. So like we're kind of uh, uh, several you know meters behind this missile. So I don't know. This is this looks about right, okay? So I'm just gonna click uh, new camera, so we create a new camera. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add motion through uh, this uh, setting in Houdini that's called motion effects. It's really powerful, as I mentioned. And, um, and this is gonna create a chop network or what's called a channel operator network. And I'll show you how we can then dive into there to adjust and fine tune some of our settings. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I highlight the camera and I'm gonna look at the parameters. If you don't have this window showing, by the way, you can just hit uh, the P key on your keyboard and it will make the parameter window appear on um, right here in your work uh, space. So the first thing I wanna do is add some motion on the X rotation axis, okay? So uh, what we're gonna do is uh, uh, here in the rotate X, I'm just gonna right click on my mouse and I'm gonna go under motion effects and I'm going to add some noise. So we're gonna add that and this is gonna open this pop-up window right here and um, it's actually done two things. One, it's created this motion effects uh, chop network as I mentioned and then it's opened up this uh, this two pane window right here that allows us to kind of fine-tune a little bit like what this noise is doing to our uh, X rotation in the camera so if I hit play uh, you can kind of see what's happening here so now like on the X axis this is kind of like adding a lot of this kind of very very turbulent very jagged kind of movement and this feels maybe a little too crazy, right? So let's uh, let's pare it down a bit. Um, the first thing that we can do is uh, maybe tone down the amplitude. Uh, let's maybe bring it down to, I don't know, like five. So that's kind of like half. The second thing we could do is uh, change the roughness because maybe like right now it kind of feels a little mechanical, right? It doesn't feel like a handheld kind of motion. It's got some inertia. So we're going to change the roughness uh, from 0.5 to maybe 0.2 and that's going to smooth out our wave quite a bit. So now this is starting to feel a little bit more like what it would look like if we were kind of, you know, like in a jet chasing this missile. There's turbulence. There's a little bit of handheld motion. Our cameraman is trying to be steady. He's got like this kind of shoulder rig and he's kind of like trying to like keep this missile as much in the frame as possible. Uh, let's add some uh, Y motion. So this is going to add, uh, you know, some movement from left to right, and we're going to do the same thing here on the Y rotation axis. And I'm just going to right click, and it's just going to hit motion effect, and add once again the noise. So now we have this kind of left and right movement. We have the same problem, right? It's very, very jagged and somewhat unnatural. So once again, we're going to like uh, maybe kind of tone down our amplitude a little bit. Uh, let's put it to six. Uh, make the roughness a little smoother, maybe uh, 0.2. And the other thing I want to do is like it's happening a little too often. Like maybe maybe the left and right is is not quite you know like um, happening as often as our um, up and down motion that we had before. And in order to kind of change like how uh, how uh, 
kind of crammed this noise wave is versus how spread out it is, we can change the period. The period is basically this kind of time period over which this, uh, this waveform that was generated, this noise wave, is kind of you know, taking place. So if we double this to like two, you'll see in our graph that it's just kind of opened up a lot, um, you know, the, the waveform, so it's not quite as crowded. Uh, maybe even more, like let's put it to like three. Okay, so now our like Y rotation is happening a lot less often. So it kind of, it's starting to feel like a little bit more organic, a little more human. Uh, let's do the same thing to our third axis, the Z axis. And what this is gonna do is gonna add like some, some of this kind of rotation motion, uh, almost like being on a boat a little bit. So we're just gonna do the same thing, right click, add our motion effects and noise, and now you can kind of see that we have this type of motion. And on this one, um, I'm just gonna change the roughness a little bit, uh, to 0.25 and maybe extend the period to like two. And I think that's, that's gonna feel pretty good. So now we kind of added, here I'm just gonna close this window, make this a little bit larger, so you can kind of see the, the movement that we're looking at. Uh, so this is kind of starting to feel a little bit more uh, organic, a little bit more handheld, you know, like there's this kind of sense of uh, um, motion to the shot. So what else can we do now? Like, uh, we closed our window, how do we bring it back up? Because, I mean, if I shift-click, on my uh, thing, uh, on, on my different parameters and my different rotation values, it's not really going to like open up our animation editor. So the way that, um, if we want to like fine tune things a little bit more, because maybe we decided, I don't know, that uh, um, that maybe like our Y motion is a little too too slow and a little too subtle, so maybe we want to increase the, the left to right kind of rotation. So we can dive into our uh, motion effects and um, and here you'll see like exactly what we added, uh, which is really like the three noise channels. One for our uh, rotation in the x-axis. The second one uh, here I need to stop for it to update. Um, if I highlight the second one is the rotation in the y-axis, and the third one is the rotation in the z-axis. So let's say that we want to add more of this kind of y-axis rotation randomness. So um, what we would do is actually highlight the noise that's contained in this uh, y-axis kind of group, which is this node right here. And here you'll see that we have access to the exact same parameters that we had access in that pop-up window. Uh, now, if you need to see the waveform as well as a visual aid, uh, you can kind of like uh, go into the motion effects view tab in Houdini and that's going to show you like the actual waveform and we want to make sure right now this guy is highlighted uh, with the view um, option selected we are going to uncheck this and put like our view on the noise number two so we can kind of see this particular noise and now if I change this so let's say like the period was like too too slow and we want to kind of like scrunch the noise wave a little bit more so I'm just going to bring it down to maybe 1.5 and you'll see now that um, that we can see the change here so that we have this visual reference. Although personally, like you know, like looking at the graph is kind of neat, but uh, I prefer to just kind of look at my animation, and you know, and just kind of see it like unfold in real life, or or as close to real life as the Houdini viewer will show me, because I'm going for more of a feel rather than a specific type of waveform, right? So uh, so to me, maybe this feels a little too much. Let's bring it up to two. Okay, I mean this kind of, this is a little bit better. Okay, cool. So this is basically how we can add this, uh, you know, camera motion to our footage. Uh, now, uh, the powerful thing about like the motion effects and the chop network is that it's not only restricted to the camera, but you can really apply to anything that you want. I mean, lights, uh, you know, objects, whatever. Uh, it's really, really powerful. And I'll probably do like another tutorial video just to cover uh, all the different things that you can kind of uh, use the motion effects on. But just to show you a really quick one, uh, if I highlight my missile here, uh, let's go under the little um, manipulation gizmo here, whatever the name is called. Um, so sometimes when missiles fly through the air, they're also kind of stabilizing with the air resistance and like turbulence and all this kind of stuff. And they tend to kind of have like a bit of this, this type of rotation going on here, right? And you can kind of see like if I move this, that my, um, Z-axis uh, rotation is 
it, th that value is changing right here. So uh, what I can do is just quite simply add a, uh, once again, motion effects, another noise. And, uh, and now if I hit play, uh, actually let's, let's go out of the camera so we can kind of like see exactly what's happening to this missile. And I'm just going to hit play. So you can see there's this little bit of a kind of this motion from left and right. And uh, in this particular case, it's actually like too little. So let's pump it up uh, by a lot. Let's try like 90 degrees. Uh, okay, 90 degrees is better, but I think we can go even higher. Let's go like 200. All right, so now like this missile is really, really kind of like trying to stabilize itself. It's just flying through the air. It's just going crazy. Um, so uh, a couple of things that I don't like about this. One is like the roughness. Uh, it's just like too jagged and too rough. So I'm just going to bring this down by quite a bit. Um, and the other thing I'm not liking is that uh, the motion of this um, movement is, eh, it's okay, but it's not really, I don't know, there's something about like this particular noise that Houdini is using um, that doesn't feel as natural for this particular type of motion. So what we can do is we can actually change the noise. So Houdini kind of defaults to using the spo sparse uh, noise, but we have access to all these different other noises. We have Hermite. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, then we have harmonic summation. This is a little too crazy. Uh, we have Brownian. This is a little too subtle. Uh, random. This is really, really crazy. And then we have alligator noise. So this is just like different kind of uh, uh, noise algorithms that Houdini is kind of using to kind of generate this, uh, these graphs. I think my favorite one was uh, the Hermite. So Hermite looks kind of cool, and uh, yeah, like, I mean, I, I buy this kind of thing. The only thing that maybe, like, uh, maybe, like, uh, change the period, maybe, like, it's happening a little too frequently. Let's put it to two. So, okay, this kind of feels a little bit more like the, you know, the, the missile guidance system is trying to kind of stabilize and kind of navigate all these different kind of, like, air, air turbulence and all this other stuff, so... So this feels a lot more natural. I'm just going to bring back my camera, make this really big. So you can kind of see a little bit like the movement that we've achieved. And uh, and we can kind of, of course, like kind of go crazy. We can kind of keep adding additional movement to, um, you know, to our camera and we can kind of continue to fine tune things. But if you can kind of imagine this scene where like, you know, like this missile is flying through the air, like at supersonic speed and we have like this jet chase and it's like and everything's going crazy I mean this is gonna give you like that organic handheld motion feel that makes uh, scenes like these feel so much more realistic so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial thank you for watching and stick around for the next one hopefully coming up uh, sooner <laughs> like in days I'm trying to like kind of crank as many of these out as possible while I have some free time so thanks for watching and uh, talk to you soon